did the unthinkable. They attacked Washington, D.C., burning most of the new public buildings, including the White House, chasing the government and President James Madison into the countryside. That'll teach them to burn our Canadian towns, the British commanders noted. But the new capital was undeveloped and mostly symbolic. And while it was a personal affront to most Americans, it didn't do it didn't much, much to interrupt the war, the war effort. Now we now have the punchable, punchable British commanders, British commanders one of more strategically valuable, valuable if less politically relevant prize. prize. They, they want Baltimore, Baltimore, the commercial, the commercial industrial, industrial giant, giant, giant of the Chesapeake Bay. Bay. Major, Major ports port and military power come to those, those in New York that will send privateer merchant ships. They also, they also want, want to, to divert the Maryland Bureau's attention, attention away, from away from the western, western shore, shore and, and Baltimore. Baltimore. Yes. Enter, Enter Captain, Captain Sir Peter Parker. The commander of His Majesty's Sir Young Frigate Brigham Elias. The 28-year-old Parker is the son of Grand Grand Saver of He started serving, serving aboard ship at age 13 and once served under the command of Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson before the British naval hero's death in 1805. The British, the British made their way along what is now Bayshore Road, road onto, onto Georgetown, Georgetown Road. road. They, then they then turned from what one of the soldiers to the farm, which may have been a farm with more than three trees, put there put by the militia to direct and slow their approach. Lieutenant Colonel Reed and a small group of Captain Simon Simon were right, right now waiting. waiting. In the original, In the original battle, battle, they were hit by three trees. Today, the corn oil may find some substitute for the very American reading. When the British are within 770 spaces, which is the optimum distance for sighting their target, they will open the fire wagon. Marines, under their commanders, lieutenants, Beta and George Lowe, on the right. right. As soon as the retreating American skirmishers clear the awaiting six pounder artillery pieces on the rise along the main American position, the militia artillery crews launch into action. They begin firing an iron six pound solid shot into the British formation below with dead results. Young Sam has a premonition it would be killed, and it came true at this point in the battle. A ship made hit later. later. One of the One first of the shots, shots from the artillery struck him just above the heart. heart. He sprang from the air and fell down on a corpse. Fire! Shot that was like buckshot. 
As the two opposing lines come within musket range of 70 paces, both sides begin to fire a musket round. The battle of the British are now beginning to test the resolve of the inexperienced county militia to stand their ground in the open field. But the limited ammunition for the American artillery. Colonel Reed, sir! Yes, Captain Houston! Continue to give them solid shot until they crest this rise. Yeah, I'll belt it right off that. Come right into that button. Thank you, sir. Come on, of the muskets. Wow. It looks it like Lieutenant Bain has been shot. Yes, he's, yes, taken, he's taken the ball, ball to each thigh. thigh. He's been sprayed with a shot. Royal Marines and sailors continue their advance, paying no time to the whizzing of muskets. Thinks he's due on the captain's pant legs. 
But when he holds his hands up to the moonlight, he sees they are covered in the captain's blood. A main artery in the leg has been set. Where's the surgeon's assistant? Jamie says later that had a pocket handkerchief and a ramp been substituted for a tourniquet, the captain's value of the life might have been saved. Parker's last words to Lieutenant Pierce were, I fear they have done you, me, and he gives his last order. Retreat, for the boats are a long way off. He then fades into unconsciousness.